We have been working together for quite a while and we're going to talk about uh, how we started and where we're at now and what we've learned and or you've learned and we'll go from there. It's been a great help right from the get-go. Um, when we decided that we wanted to become folks a smoke-free housing organization, um, it's following the trend of a, a lot of other organizations like ours and uh, so we were pretty excited but we wanted to take it carefully and, and with your help um, designed a survey for our tenants. Mm -hmm. um, that survey was a confidential survey that, that um, that the tenant felt free to f fill out honestly and, and submit anonymously. Mm -hmm. um, you, you helped collate that information, pull that data together for us, and the, the upshot of that was that we're really happy to, f to see that most of our tenants did want a smoke-free environment. And uh, you know, there, was, there were some smokers that, that you know, obviously disagreed, but for the most part, it was a, it was a, a re resounding yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and so how did you like how did you go through the process then of, of implementing it? Well, so we began a six months process of educating the tenants about what was going to happen. Um, uh, we also uh, obtained a bunch of smoke free signs from from your organization, mm -hmm. which was a great help. Um, had those ready to post, and so we gave a notice. We got about six months of notice to the tenants, and um, with that, and then the posting of the signs and a final celebratory note to all the tenants mm -hmm. that yay, we're smoke free. Um, we made a big splash about it, and yeah, um, I remember. and and. We've been smoke free now for two years. I remember we had an article actually, and I think one of your tenants uh, wrote a, a letter to the editor, really grateful right for this that. change. That's I remember right. that. That was great. Yeah. Um, the other thing is we uh, worked with you in supporting the the smokers that were interested in quitting by providing 802 quits uh, resources. Uh, we have them called quit kits, but that was really great. That and that was part of your everything that you sent to you made yes. sure that that was a resource that was on each of those letters. It is it, it is a great resource. In fact, we still use those kits. We we give them out to new tenants when they come in. And so let's talk about. Um, like what you learned in that process of implementation, like what would be some lessons learned from that? <laughs> well, uh, I think the first thing is to take it slow and, mm -hmm. and that um, you can't expect overnight that there's 100% compliance. I think that's, that's, that's key. People need to understand how to rearrange their, their smoking habits if they, mm -hmm. if they have a real serious addiction. Mm -hmm. um, and so you find, I find that um, folks that have been in their apartments for many years um, have, a, have a harder time overcoming that hurdle and figuring out how they can, um, how they can still smoke or, or um, what they have to change in their life to, to, to be able to be in the apartment and keep it smoke free. Um, that, was, that was number one. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other is that we learned that not all properties necessarily need to be 100% smoke free or that is um, if, if the smoking area outside the apartment is very close to the house then mm -hmm. it's, it's not our property but, but it's close to the house that you'll, you'll get some blowback into the, into the apartments mm -hmm. and so that can cause an issue. So we found that, that, that being flexible around those issues uh, is important. We also found that, that uh, smokers sometimes will migrate from our property to a neighbor's property mm -hmm. to smoke right. and so we have to be really careful about that mm -hmm. because um, we can't have any litter that's going to be deposited on somebody else's property. So we, so for our smokers, we educate them about about pocketing butts and that sort of thing, so mm -hmm. that there's not a litter issue. So little things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, it was f it was relatively painless mm -hmm. um, for for most people, and and many people enjoyed it. As you said, we had letters to the editor that that, that appreciated mm -hmm. show, showing their appreciation. So um, yeah, so I think you know we learned a lot, but. Um, but the overall, the, the hurdles, I think, were in the first part of the process. That is, figuring out, you know, that this can really happen, and it's not the end of the world. It's really, it really, it, it's really for the best for the tenants mm -hmm. and for the property. Yes, and uh, and I think that's been uh, great that you've, but you've kind of really had this message that you've continued, which is it's about the smoke and not about the smokers, and really supporting the smokers, and mm -hmm. as well as um, providing a safe place for the tenants. If you're a resident of an apartment that is not smoke-free. Ask your landlord about making the change. Greater Falls Connections, Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition, and Springfield Prevention Coalition have free resources for tenants and landlords that will walk you through the process of going smoke-free.